Greetings, people of the web. Today we are looking at the Engo 2D engine, which is for Golang, uh, and it's a pretty sweet engine um, for getting 2D games up and running relatively quickly. It's <laughs> it's got some ways of doing things. It's a it's a new style of architecture for me, so I've been enjoying learning how it works. Sadly, right now it's not got a lot of activity on the Git page, so. Hopefully this video will kind of reinvigorate that a little bit. Um, quick overview of the package. Engo is an engine, <laughs> whatever exactly that means, built on top of OpenGL using the entity component system architecture. So we have entities, components inside the entities and systems that move around parts of the components or ECS. Once you get ahead around ECS, the whole thing starts to make some sense. Um, you can download the stuff from engo.io that's their website or from github it has a few dependencies which are explained in the readme file which i didn't discover until after i spent ages running around trying to find all the bits that didn't work so go through the readme file and install that stuff first and then it should be okay to install the entity component system is a relatively flexible way of working i'll try to give you my overview an entity is the equivalent of an OOP object, except that it doesn't actually do anything. It just stores the data. We keep that slightly separate. Um, that's the biggest difference between this system and uh, object-orientated programming. Components. Each entity is a combination of a number of components. These are normally included, in, in Golang at least, you include these in the entity type as anonymous struct members. I don't know how you do that in other languages, but in Golang it works quite well to just include them in the struct. So here's an example of that. So we've got a frog entity and, oh, that should say struct, S-T-R-U-C-T. And that contains uh, an ECS basic. I think actually they're supposed to be stored as pointers. Maybe, I don't think it actually matters a lot whether they're pointers or not because they are just data. But so it's got a basic entity, which is basically a way of providing them all a, a unique a unique ID. Uh, when you call new basic, it just grabs a lock and increments a number so that you all get so that every every object gets a unique identifier. Um, comma not space component. Where is this object in space? Yeah, you know, it's helpful to know. So it's got a location and a width and height, which are very useful for the collision system and for the render system and some other things that you might want to create. But it, the, those are two systems that already exist. Um, we'll get to that. Common dot render component also useful for the render system. I don't think anyone else needs that, but some, maybe some others edit that, so they might need it. And a jump component, which is just a component that I've made up I thought because I'm making frogs they kind of need a component that will explain how far they are in their jump or something um, may not use that systems actually do the things each system can have objects added to it and every update cycle will basically loop through all of the items and do whatever it wants to them uh, so the rendering system has a list of an array of, and it keeps just a list of these structs with a basic entity, a space component, and a render component, and draws them on every update cycle. Notice that you don't give it the object, you actually give it the individual components of the object that the system needs. That allows it not to care which objects it's working with, it just needs to know a few bits. Um, so if I had a jump system, I would probably have a struct which has a basic entity, a space component, and a jump component, so, so that when it loops through, it can move it around in space and take account how much jumping it's done. So that's probably how I would handle that. I haven't actually used a jump component in my program so far. In Engo, a system is an interface, really. It, any system that has these two methods uh, Every system must have these two methods to be a system. So, update, which takes a D, which is a float32, and that represents the time since the last update. And a remove function. So it takes the ECS basic identity and it just removes the whole thing. So it'll basically it'll go through the array and find it. 
Most systems, definitely all the ones that come with Engo, have an add method. But the add methods are all different, so they can't be in an interface. And the add methods take each of the individual components needed um, to add them. So, um, as well. so here we have the frog and car. A frog needs basic entities and, and a car. So I didn't tell you. We're going to make a fake frogger game, you know, some kind of froggery type clone. So we need frogs and we need cars. So we got our basic entity um, space, which so whenever we we can make lots of frogs and we can make lots of cars. And when we make a frog, we we want to add it to all the right systems. And so the render system will need a basic entity and uh, a space com oop, and a space component and a render component. The movement system only really needs the basic entity and a space component and the collision system needs the basic entity the space component and the collision component so the, the space component tells you where it is and the collision component just tells it how it behaves when it collides um, and some other systems that I make may require frog specifics maybe that jump system would require the frog specifics so that gives us all of these things. Um, <laughs> so control A, delete, and and the car the same thing. Whenever we make a car, we need to add. Well, we definitely we need to add it to the car movement system, and so we'll add its basic entity, space component, and I think that's all it needs. Unless we decide that we want to store some velocity stuff, in which case we'll probably make our movement system require a velocity component. I think that's what I did. So, <laughs> so our car system. So, but that that allows the movement system to just loop through and use velocity and set the car's velocity that way. So well, that was one way. I that was how I solved it. But you can do that however you like. But the collision system absolutely requires the basic entity, the space component. And a collision component. Did I forget to give my cars a collision component? Okay, so a go to cars thing. Let's try this one. And they need a, a collision component. Because the collision system needs a collision component. You can't just send it nil. You have to send it one of these. Oh, uh, control A. Oh, wrong layer. Collision component. And of course, for the render system, because we do want to draw our cars, we send the basic entity, we send the space component, and we send the render component. I know it's not a terribly pretty diagram, but at least it gives you some idea of what we're doing. We have to send them individually parts. And of course, if these systems change parts of each other, then they know about the changes, because, but they only know about the changes that matter to them. Yeah, in ECS we also have a world, which is the system which stores all of the other systems. There's a ton of stuff. And there's a scene which allows you to break up basically what people see into separate things. So you'll have a, a scene for the main game and a scene for the menus. Or maybe if your game involves going to different places, then maybe some of those will be different scenes. Maybe. Um, certainly when the behavior is different, it's got to be a different scene. So let's get on with this Frogger project, shall we? Um, so all I've done so far is I've just created a basic package. Um, this is inside a folder called Frog2. Um, I'm actually going to create another folder. Um, and I'm going to call it the main, I guess, I'm going to call this folder Play, which is our play scene. Um, Okay, so we've got a directory called play. Now, if we go in there, I'm going to open up a file called play forward slash scene dot go. So this is our play scene, and it's going to be a package play, obviously. And we are going to need to import some standard Engo stuff. Um, so it's Engo dot io forward slash Engo. think for now that's probably all we need the next thing we need is our scene struct so type 
see um, I'm going to call it play scene and this will be our main in fact I don't think it needs to hold anything actually but just oh it does need to be declared as a struct struct but it needs a couple of methods um, because again seen as an interface and so to be able to add it to the world it needs to have a method um, so the first method is going to be a type it takes pointer to a play scene oh and this is called type and it returns a string the reason for this is just an efficiency thing reflection is hard just grabbing it by type is slightly quicker right just say this as a one of these we also need a function called preload so pre but actually we don't need that to do anything not right now at least funk but that will be used for when we want to do images and stuff. We need to make sure certain images exist. Um, that's where that happens. And the next function we need is called setup. Um, and this takes a pointer to ECS dot world doesn't return anything so of course we need go um, so here goes we need engo dot io forward slash engo forward slash common which is the package which has the whole which has the render system in, in fact it has most of the systems that we're going to use in that are already made um, and if we want to make our own systems, then we just put them in our own package. But the render system is one that we've already got, so we might as well use it. Um, common dot set back ground, and I'm going to set that to color dot white, which I've taken from the image dot image color package. Um, we're going to need um, to make a, a render system. So RS, render system, colon equals. And we're just going to make one. It's just a struct definition with a couple of methods. So we can just do common dot render system wiggly, wiggly braces. Doesn't even need to have any variables. And then W, which is our world ecs dot world um, dot add system rs in theory this should now give us a white bar main and what we're going to do is we're going to use that scene so I need to import it and that is in github.com forward slash coder convoy that's me forward slash frog two forward slash play so. oh and now we're going to use engo's objects um, opt colon equals engo dot run options so <laughs> In order to in order to get things moving, we need to have some run options, don't we? And so it just takes a struct of the fairly standard things. You have to set a width. Um, I'll set that to 500. Um, height. Oh, I'm going to set that to 700. Sorry. And this one will set to 500. And we can set a title as well. There are other options. But these ones make the most sense to me. 
Frogger 2. Call it Froggy. Froggy 2. And end comma. We will call engo.run and we have to send it opts and we also send it a system now we've just made a system so we're going to make a new play dot what did I call that? play scene and now that's one of the annoying things. I got used to Go being really fast at compiling and and using this because it has to use some C compiling. Um, takes a little bit longer. Oh, come on. <sighs> no. That has to be capital, surely. Have this go. So, go run. And this can take quite a long time, actually, because it's compiling not just Go code, but also it's got to recompile the C code into it as well. You still end up with a single executable. And it's quite involved C stuff as well, because it's involved in OpenGL and other stuff so here we go a screen with a white background that does absolutely nothing but that's the start and we have a screen that does absolutely nothing so now what we're going to do is we're going to make our I guess we're going to make a frog so let's go back over here and in our play thing we'll make a stroke frog yeah, we'll do a frog like this, frog.go. We might change this later, it doesn't matter that much for now. Play, no, package, can I spell? Package play. Import. Now for this we're gonna at least need ec engo forward slash dot io forward slash engo forward slash common. Don't know for sure what else we need right now, but we're going to define a type called frog. So type frog, and that's a struct. Um, and our struct and this frog will need to have ECS dot basic entity. And as I said before, this is. Um, Yeah, as I said before, that basic entity is just a means of giving them a unique number so that they can be deleted easily and referenced across various other objects. A little bit of useful finding stuff. Um, Ingo.io forward slash ECS. We're also going to need a pointer to common dot render component. So these are the components that get added to the system and we need a common dot space component. Otherwise we can't draw it. Um, for the sake of ease elsewhere, I think we'll make a new frog method funk new frog and this returns a pointer to a frog so and frog and again we can create basic entity and that is ECS dot new basic. This is a function that returns a new basic entity, just like our new frog function, and it gives it a unique number. Um, the render component, so we can have that. 
render component. Oh, and I think that should be okay. Render component. That might need to be a pointer. I can't remember for sure. And this takes a render component. Um, the render component needs to have some actual information about itself. Um, the very least, it needs a drawable, drawable colon common dot triangle. For the sake of argument, I think that's a function. Now, just do like that, and. The I feel like this should be a pointer as well, and it needs a color. Um, so why not just use color dot black? And we need to import image dot color, don't we? Image color. So we've got our render component, now we need a space component. So where are we going to put this frog? Well, somewhere near the middle of the bottom, right? So for now, common dot space component. The, the vital bits you can't miss for a space component are um, position, which is an engo dot point. <laughs> points are fairly straightforward right x across y down um, so we've made it 700 so make this let's make this 350 minus minus 350 minus 20 is that gives it a width of 40 so 350 minus 20 is 330 and it's it's Row will be we said 500 minus 40 is five, um, 460. Obviously, <laughs> this can probably d be done more effectively if you want to use constants or widths or have variable sizes. For now, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, the other thing it needs is a width, and I'm going to give that as 40. And a height of 40. So now we have a means of making a frog. Um, so in our scene, why don't we just make a frog? And you know what? The frog should probably take a couple of parameters, but I won't worry about it now. Um, so. We have our system here. FG colon equals new frog. RS dot add. <coughs> and now we have to add the separate parts of the frog, which is a little bit boilerplate, a little bit funny. I've actually found, I've come up with a solution to this, but I'm not going to introduce it right now. This is, I've played with the way the system works and I, I've made a pull request on GitHub that they might take it in board, but like I said, there's currently not a lot of busyness, so we'll have to use the current system. Um, and that is add fg dot basic entity. Um, and then a quick bit of research to find out what engo, which what the order is. And that's one of the reasons my system is better. Um, frog dot basic entity add frog dot space. I bet it's render component frog dot space component. And so we add all of the three parts and, and basically the, the rendering system will then be able to draw them as it needs to. So let's run it and see what we get. Wait for the 10 seconds.
Okay, so I've got a couple of messages here. The first one here says, um, in frog.go, I cannot use ECS not new basic as a put um, as a pointer to it, so no worries there. Let's um, let's dereference that and or riff. Let's point to that. Um, a render component doesn't exist. It's a common dot render component. And was there another error? Frog dot go mixture of field value and value initializers. Line twenty two. Twenty two. Oh, I see. Yeah, this is supposed to be base component colon, so that it knows which component we're adding. Okay, that might fix some of the problems. And everybody stretch. Frog.go 17. Cannot take the address of ECS.newBasic. Okay, I forgot to dereference this. And I am still trying to work out why I can't do a new basic. So just let me have do a minute's research. Okay. So I think my mistake was pointing to them instead of doing this. So I'm going to store them direct. Um, and not dereference. Not dereference. Not dereference. And that probably won't complain, but we do still need a um, but that means we need to make sure that these are added by pointers. So and that and that, and that. Try again. There's no frog. I totally put a frog on there. Okay, we have a frog. Excellent. So apparently it wasn't a pointer to the triangle. It was just a triangle. Um, basically fixed our problem. So now we have a little frog there. And we can resize the window and it will... It seems to just keep it in the middle. There, there are... I'm going to call it a day there. Next time we do this, I'm going to add movement to the frog. And hopefully get some cars on the, on the board as well. Then we can have cars and frogs all moving and talking to each other. And that should be fun for everybody. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. And I'll see you next week when we carry on with Engo and the how to make Engo do crazy stuff. <laughs>